Brian Last, another great talent, has emerged unemployed from the World Wrestling Entertainment this week. The former Claudio Castagnoli, recently for the past 10 or 11 years known as Cesaro, thankfully that will be over. Formerly Antonio Cesaro. That's right. He did have two names for a while, didn't he? And then Vince decided he hates first names. He hates the name Antonio, apparently. Well, he'd never forgiven Rocca for turning on his old man. Uh, You know, but actually, I think this is probably the best thing. I don't know. I'm I'm not Claudio's accountant, uh, but it's the best thing for him because they were never, despite numerous opportunities, apparently ever going to let him go as far as one would think his ability would be able to take him if they let him. Um, Do you remember just a couple of years ago um, when the pandemic first started? And I can't remember what show it was, but it was one of the first shows they did with no people, just, you know, empty arena. And he was the only guy that his shit actually worked with no fans. Everybody else was just used to painting by numbers, having the standard WWE match, you know, whatever. And he adapted and... Because he can work, and he can work a variety of styles, and his shit looks good, and he was athletic. Uh, And instead of trying to do, you know, the the shit that we found out doesn't translate a lot of cases when there's no people in the building, you know, he, he, he would adapt himself to whatever environment he was in because he's that good. And I've been a huge fan of his since the Ring of Honor days. And... So I think it's the best thing for him that, that how can we miss you if you won't go away? But besides that, if, you know, as Dutch Mantel, you say, if you always do what you always did, you always get what you always got. And that's where he was going to be if he was still in the WWE. Just, you know, the guy that you can have a good match and get a good reaction out of it, et cetera, et cetera. And we're not going to do anything with him. Well, beyond the good match, he's one of a string of guys. And it's been a variety to them. Everything from Zack Ryder, you know, now he's Matt Cardona, his real name, to Miro when he was Rusev, where there have been points where the crowd really seemed to get behind Cesaro and they were ready to elevate him. But the company wasn't. And the company wasn't listening to the crowd at that moment. And eventually things die down when you keep booking someone like shit. Yeah. That groundswell can only stay up for so long. The... (sighs) Some of the most over attractions in wrestling history started getting over on their own and their individual booker or whoever saw that and went with it and gave them an opportunity to expand on it rather than, well, they may like him, but we don't have any plans for him. Well, make some fucking plans. It's it, they, they, they put the cart squarely in front of the horse in a lot of cases with Cesaro or anybody else when they it's easier when somebody when the fans already like somebody to make them like them more or if they already dislike somebody make them dislike them more than it is to make the fans do either when they don't care about somebody to begin with so but anyway as i said the only problem that i have now is and this may be an unpopular opinion, because, I mean, I've already seen people speculating as soon as they released the news, what, yesterday, I think it was, or whatever, that his contract expired. It wasn't that they released him. It was that his contract was up. They couldn't agree on a new deal. And so now everybody's thinking, oh, he'll fit right in an AEW. Well, I'm sure he might. But I wish he would take six months off and maybe he's already done this part of it, come up with an entirely new presentation. Take what he does well, what his strong points are, he's got a lot of them, but figure out not Claudio Castagnoli, because that doesn't fit real well on the marquee, and there's you know there's a reason why Reggie Lasowski became the crusher, just like there's a reason why Reginald Dwight became Elton John. 
but in in terms of his look, his presence, the way he dresses, the way he presents himself, take the shit that is in his in ring game, and that he's that he's good at. He speaks what five or six languages or whatever. I don't know how that figures into anything, but we can't just see Cesaro with his old name. We can't just see Claudio Castagnoli the way he used to present himself before WWE. This is a main event guy that presented in the right way can make a stir and, but he's got to, there's got to be something. And I'm, I don't have the answer to that. I don't know what his gimmick is. I haven't seen him in 10 years besides on television, but if he can figure that out and update something and new fresh, he's strong as a bull. He doesn't have any bad habits. He's a great fucking guy. He's an incredible worker. He's very intelligent. You know, there you've this is a guy that and he's obviously dedicated to the wrestling business. So it's a guy that you can use and would be a benefit to your company if you can figure out a way to use the guy without bringing in a guy that's been on the other guy's TV for the past 10 years and hadn't set the world on fire through mostly none of his own fault. See what I'm saying? There's got to be something different with him. He needs to make a splash. I'd like to see him take six months off and get out of people's minds. And he doesn't just come fresh from the other television because it hasn't been, you know, some guys coming fresh from the other TV might be a benefit. But in this case, I don't think it is. I think the, we want to forget about Cesaro and we want to be able to take a fresh look at whoever Claudio Castagnoli is going to be next. But I've been a huge fan of his since Ring of Honor, him and Hero. They were my Midnight Express at that point in time. In Ring of Honor 2009, 2010, 2011, we had Davey Richards and Eddie Edwards, the American Wolves, had the Briscoe brothers, obviously. Even Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin came in for us. But the centerpiece of the tag team division originally and in the Sinclair era, especially was going to be hero and Claudio, the Kings of wrestling. That was the biggest loss in, yeah. your, in your time in ring of honor, I think. Oh, and, and, and that was the thing is I knew what was going to happen, but I couldn't stop it because even if you told him what was going to happen and that was what happened for Claudio, I guess financially it worked out. Okay. For hero, it, it was just a morass of, aggravation but let, well, let, before i tell you what i predicted let me put him over a little bit and hero had a lot to do with training claudio because claudio came along <clears throat> you know somewhat afterwards but hero at that point in time he, i mean he had early in his career he'd had a superman outfit he was chubby guy there's comedy going on but all of a sudden, at that period of time, he had gotten in the best shape I think he's ever been in. He's not a guy that shows muscles, but he was lean, and he's a tall guy. He could do really outrageous-looking stuff for a guy of that size and that height. And I, mean, I remember seeing him out in, out in the ring warming up one night, doing handstands on the top rope which he didn't look like he had neither the arm power nor that tall of a guy to be able to do that, that balance, whatever. But he wrote, he was working hard. He had transformed his body and he had his shit down. And Claudio is such an amazingly strong guy. He was green then, but he was a great student and they meshed well as a team. And I knew right there that a, a team that can work with the American Wolves and do the modern style high spots and stuff, but can go in with the Briscoes and have a fight, can go in with Haas and Benjamin and have a classic wrestling match with wrestling spots. They could do everything. And they got, I remember the, uh, my favorite match, whoever wants to search it out was in Toronto, Kings of Wrestling and the Briscoe brothers in a street fight. And I helped produce that for them and, and showed them a bunch of the old tricks and bullshit. And they had an old-fashioned street fight where they used furniture, but everything still made sense, and it tore the fucking house down. 
And then they could go in and do Lucha if they needed to. Because Hero had been a lot of different places. And he's a, you know, hyper business studying guy. But they, the point is, they were the best tag team, I thought, all around in the ring in the business at that time. And they would have always been figured in as heels as, you know, like the Midnight Express were. You might want to use the Briscoes as heels later on, but they'll be on top. Or Haas and Benjamin might, might turn heel, but always the Kings would be figured. And they got the offer as soon as pretty much as we announced the sale to Sinclair to go to developmental Florida championship wrestling at that point. And we all knew and predicted what was going to happen. They were going to get there. They were going to love Claudio because he had the body and the muscles and they weren't going to love hero because he didn't have a body and muscles, even though he was the better worker and kind of the key to the leader of the team. And they would never get another tag team match together because they'd split them up and make them singles. And hero was doomed in that environment, whereas Claudio, they would probably like him, and then they'd find out that he probably wasn't a dynamic promo on his own without somebody like his partner to play off of. And that's pretty much what happened, except he, because he's such a great guy and a just upstanding person, you know, he was in a system for 10 or 11 years or whatever it was, but and, you know, that's, I hate being right sometime, but that's, we couldn't tell them, well, don't take this opportunity because that'd be pissing on their dreams, but somebody else pissed on their dreams. You know, it's like when ECW got on TNN, right when that happened, the Dudley boys went to WWE and whether you like him or not, they were a major part of the ECW show and yeah. Paul finally gets TV and they're gone. To me, like I said before, one of the biggest what ifs, what if for the next two years you had had the Kings of Wrestling? I think it changes the entire makeup of every one of those shows going forward. It would have been a lot better, I think. Yeah, well, that's why I hated to see him go. <laughs> Naturally, yeah. Um, you know, but uh, again, and a lot of people are going to say, well, Claudio at least, you know, had the opportunity to be a single. As great as some people are, did you ever hear me say that Bobby Eaton should have ever been the world heavyweight champion? Never. Because he shouldn't. But as a tag team, he was a member of and the driving force behind the best tag team in the world. And the if they had had the opportunity, uh, Chris and Claudio, to be in a promotion that focused on or presented tag team wrestling at a level of or near the level of singles wrestling, then that would have opened up a chance for them to be on main events of major shows. But because every time they get a good tag team, the first thing they do is split them up down there. Or if they're identical brothers or whatever the fuck, they're kind of stuck with each other. Uh, or the Mysterios, father and son, whatever the case. It just, you know, both of them were going to be limited, especially, you know, Chris, for the reasons I mentioned, but even Claudio, because you don't see that guy as the world singles champion, but the package was good enough to be in main events together as a tag team. I guess that's what I'm saying. So anyway, I hope he does not go right to AEW. Can I ask you a question about that? Yes. And, you know, this is one of those cases where you kind of wish you had at least a ring of honor that was up and running right now. So there would be a landing spot for someone who's not ready for AEW or shouldn't go to AEW right now or may not want to go to AEW. And we all assume he'll go to AEW because of who he is and his work. But I think part of the problem for me is, and I'm sure he'll go there and have great matches with a lot of those guys, but because we've seen so many guys come off WWE TV and go right into AEW, it takes down the excitement level for me of a guy like that going there, even though I like him more than I like a Malachi Black, let's say. We've seen too many guys, Andrade, Miro, even though he vastly improved before he vastly disappeared. We've <laughs> seen various people come off that TV, and that's one of those dangers. I mean, you need people that fans will recognize, but you don't want to fill your roster with tons of ex-WWE guys. But see, here's the thing. To me, Claudio is not a guy that you... 
he's not going to make a difference if they just announced Claudio or Cesaro or whatever is going to be on TV next week. He could make a difference if he, and I'm not talking about him not going right to AEW, going somewhere else. I'm talking about disappear. The last thing that Claudio Castagnoli needs is practice wrestling. And and I would think that since he's a intelligent, intelligent, I would think since he's an intelligent, sensible person that's been employed by the WWE for 10 years, that he's not in financial duress. I would, as I said, if I was him, I'd go away and nobody would see me or hear from me. And Cesaro would be the furthest thing from anybody's mind past. I wonder where he went. And is it six months or is it a year? Stay in shape and figure out the way you want to be presented as a single, as a top guy, as a main event star, and how you can make an impact wherever you want to go. Make those arrangements. Go somewhere in secret. Don't work shows to practice it. As I said, he doesn't need practice wrestling. He needs practice with his presentation. Get a couple of your trusted friends and go to a like the Nightmare Factory or wh wherever the fuck Claudio's wrestling these days, somebody that I bet he knows has got a ring around, and do this in secret and come out as a new person with a plan on how to get that new person over, whether anybody knows, and they'll figure out it's Claudio. It doesn't matter. Right away. It's presented and, as Claudio. And you have to say that. Everyone will know who it is right now. Yes, away. everybody doesn't matter. Because you're focusing on presenting that guy as he is now and getting that guy as he is now over rather than worrying about did people know him because he was on WWE television. With, with a Brian Danielson or a CM Punk, you want people to know him from WWE television. With Cesaro, no. You want your own main event guy that you're presenting and promoting an entirely different way. And and then we'll see based on his merits and what he wants, not some bullshit Tony Khan Welsh rarebit dream or the fantasies of these spooky dungeon and dragon dwelling people like the house of the knights of the kings of the throne of the black guy or whatever the fuck they're doing. Not hokey, not spooky, not supernatural, hopefully something cool and dynamic. In a way that Claudio can be himself and do his thing, whatever that may be. But that's the way you would want to present a guy like that. He didn't he didn't set the world on fire. He didn't draw record gates. He didn't set record pay-per-views in the WWE. Is that his fault? No, not entirely. Never got a chance to. But that's what they if if he just comes out and does the same thing, it's the same thing in a different place. Take some time. Let him miss him, then come back as somebody new, and holy free holy, let's see what happens. And another guy choosing not to re-sign with WWE when they offered a contract. Yes, and that's why I'm hoping and thinking that he's probably financially able to do what I'm talking about doing. Because, again, you know, he probably got to the point where, like, well, this is, this is what it's going to be, and, and I can do more. Maybe he's thinking about going to Japan. I mean, he would fit in, my God. As strong as he is, the power shit that he can do, the Japanese folks would love him. So, I mean, he fits in in a variety of places, but I would, I would come up with, if I was Claudio, and boy, he's sitting there right now if he's listening, thinking, thank God he's not. But, there he is on your phone. Well, son of a bitch. Claudio, I'll be there in a minute. Um... I would be thinking this, whatever I do coming up on national television is going to be the way people are going to remember me for the rest of my career, good, bad, or indifferent. So I want to make it right. I want to make an impact. I want to show what I can do. And I don't want to be fucking around with the pudding gang or just being booked because I was once friends with a guy who flip flop from WWE to AEW. And now I'm in a program with him because they ain't got anything else for me. And he has no non-compete. His contract's up, and he's ready to do whatever he wants tomorrow or today if he wants. Well, uh, but again, do you know, uh, the time heals all wounds, and time 
sometimes can heal bad booking, except when it's spectacular. I mean, Terry Taylor never got over the Red Rooster, etc. But Cesaro, they haven't made him a complete idiot. They just haven't let him go to his potential. Go home, read a book in several different languages. Think of what you, who you want to be. Have a plan. Work it out ahead of time. Don't rush into anything and go at it. Don't make it so gimmicky that you can't knock it out of the park and be somebody. That would be my advice. But in the meantime, since you know he is the Swiss Superman, right? And he speaks what I said, five, six, maybe seven languages. And he's, he's a continental kind of guy, an intercontinental kind of guy. He, he's traveled all over the world, right? And he's moving with the movers and shakers. He's got the international Savoy Fair, the debonair kind of thing going on. If pro wrestling doesn't work out, I'm thinking maybe Claudio Castagnoli goes into fine art. What do you think, Brian? It's hard to give you an answer. I had never thought about this option for the former Cesaro, the former Antonio Cesaro, the once Claudio Castagnoli, maybe again, fine art. Fine art. Interesting. I think that's a great idea. Fine art. Or as I sometimes uh, abbreviate it when I'm taking notes, F art. Because fine art can get you far in the world today because, you know, it's a great investment. And it's an investment that a guy, an international mover and shaker, a rich man like Claudio Castagnoli, he can easily get into. But Brian, for the rest of us, for all of us low-level schlubs, you know, who's we think fine art is the Sunday funnies, sometimes it's not as easy for us. But now it can be. Have you heard about the folks at Masterworks? I have, and this is a very, very exciting series of things that you could do with Masterworks, and of course the idea of buying fine art, owning a piece of fine art. Like you said, it's been a high barrier of entry, but now anyone could get in. Just anybody, just willy-nilly. You can't, I'm telling you, you can't beat this thing. Because if you, just last week, I bought the Mona Lisa's left nostril. Now, the folks at Masterworks is letting normal guys like you and me, Brian, and all of our listeners out there who are all normal, mentally and physically and sexually, we're all normal. But normal guys like you and me now can diversify our portfolios with blue chip art from masters like Picasso and Monet, and Basquiat, 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 and also Ralph Bakshi. There's some prints on here of, that I'm looking at of Ralph Bakshi's, but diversifying with art isn't new. The ultra-wealthy have done it for centuries, and it's no wonder when you learn that blue-chip art prices outpace the S&P 500 by 164%. For the last 25 years, I've talked about it, Brian. It's the Amazing Fantasy 15 principle. You buy a comic book 50 years later, it's worth more money than your stock in Exxon. Happen to me, folks. It could happen to you. So Masterworks allows you to buy into these fine pieces of art. And when those pieces of art are sold or potentially stolen and sold on the black market in somewhere in Europe or Bangladesh, then you get a cut, a kickback, a piece of it. You're in the art business. And there's 330,000 members of Masterworks now because this stuff is taking off. So you can get priority access to Masterworks with my unique link. Are you ready to jot this down, Brian? Well, I have Mas the link. Well, you've got it. You don't have to jot it down masterworks.art a-r-t slash gym masterworks.art slash gym and you go there you get priority access and you see all of the graphs and the the figures and the colors and the bars and the charts and the pie charts that prove whatever i just said is true so you can see that right there on the fucking site. I told you the all the different terms they used and numbers. There's numbers all over this website, folks. So as I said, join the over 330,000 members making money in some fashion. Eventually with masterworks.art slash gym. 
See important disclosures at masterworks.io slash disclaimer.